NASA scientists say the moon is currently in the nine-year half of its 18-year rotation around Earth, where it is making high tides higher and low tides lower. They say that while high tides are currently not really higher than in the past, they will get significantly higher when the moon returns to this cycle of tide boosting in the mid-2030s. Here are the details. NASA reports that by the year 2035, every U.S. coastline will experience more high tide floods, also called nuisance floods or sunny day floods, when the moon's rotational cycle will amplify rising sea levels caused by climate change. In half of the moon's 18.6 year cycle, Earth's regular daily tides are suppressed, so high tides are lower than normal, and low tides are higher than normal. In the other half of the cycle, tides are amplified, so high tides get higher and low tides get lower. Global sea level rise pushes high tides in only one direction, higher. So half of the 18.6 year lunar cycle decreases the effect of sea level rise on high tides, and the other half increases the effect. NASA says the moon is currently actually in this tide amplifying part of its cycle. However, along most U.S. coastlines, this lunar boost has not really made high tides higher than in the past. But NASA warns it will be a different story the next time the cycle comes around to amplify tides again in the mid-2030s. Because then, global sea level rise would have been at work for another decade. NASA says the higher seas, amplified by the lunar cycle, will cause a leap in the number of high tide floods on almost all U.S. mainland coastlines, and also Hawaii and Guam. Only far northern coastlines, including Alaska's, will be spared for another decade or longer because these land areas are being pushed upward by long-term geological processes. Astronomers from the University of Texas at Austin have revived a plan to build a massive 100-meter-wide mirror made of liquid on the surface of the moon. The scientists described the importance of such a huge product in a new paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. They say a giant moon-based telescope would be able to capture light from objects nearly as old as the Big Bang. Liquid mirrors are lighter, simpler, faster to construct, and 10 times cheaper than conventional glass telescope mirrors. The key to a liquid mirror telescope is that the liquid must be rotated constantly. When the liquid rotates, gravity pulls down on its surface, while inertia pulls it sideways at the edge of the dish. As a result, the liquid forms a uniform and perfect parabola, the ideal reflecting surface for a telescope. Work is underway to find the perfect mix of liquids as it requires a liquid metal to drift on top of other liquids, plus a thin layer of material on top to minimize evaporation. Liquid mirrors usually use mercury, but that won't work on the moon as mercury will freeze in the very cold moon temperatures. Many scientists believe that the moon formed when a Mars-sized planet called Theia struck Earth around 4.5 billion years ago. Now, a team of scientists theorize that Theia's remains are what formed two mysterious continent-sized blobs of rock buried deep in Earth's mantle. For decades, seismologists have puzzled over these two blobs, which sit below West Africa and the Pacific Ocean and straddle Earth's core like a pair of headphones. Up to 1,000 kilometers tall and several times that wide, they are the largest thing in Earth's mantle, says Qian Yuan, a PhD student in geodynamics at Arizona State University. Seismic waves from earthquakes abruptly slow down when they pass through the layers, which suggests they are denser and chemically different from the surrounding mantle rock. These blobs might simply have crystallized out of the depths of Earth's primordial magma ocean. But based on new isotopic evidence and modeling, Yuan believes the blobs are the guts of the theoretical alien impactor planet. The study is currently under review. Scientists found new clues about when the moon's internal dynamo stopped generating the lunar magnetic field. Billions of years ago, the ancient moon had a powerful dynamo at its core that produced a strong global magnetic field. Scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology say that they have pinned down when that dynamo stopped, leading to the field's dissipation. In a study published in Science Advances, researchers say that the Apollo mission collected lunar rocks that preserve a record of the moon's ancient magnetic field. However, most of these rocks dated to between 3 and 4 billion years, or too long ago for studying the end of the moon's internal dynamo. To research the moon's later magnetic history, the scientists tested two samples that were 1 billion years old and found them to record a weak lunar magnetic field. As the rocks were left by a meteor impact, scientists reheated the rocks and obtained the same readings to make sure the impact's heat did not interfere with the rocks' magnetic records. According to the MIT News release, the moon used to be much closer to Earth, and the gravitational effect caused the liquid lunar core to wobble, which created the magnetic field. 
The weak magnetism recorded by the two rocks suggests the gravitational effects had begun to seize up one billion years ago. Scientists are proposing that sperm and egg samples from 6.7 million of Earth's species should be sent to a gene vault built on the moon as a modern global insurance policy. Such a lunar gene bank, which could also house seed and spore samples, is envisaged as being built under the moon's surface in a hollow, cooled lava tube. Specimens deposited in the vault would be kept refrigerated at cryogenic temperatures, with the facility's electrical power coming from solar panels on the moon's surface. The gene bank would preserve Earth's genetic diversity in the event of a global catastrophe, such as one that might be caused by climate change, a supervolcano, or an asteroid impact. The fear is that such a catastrophe could destroy existing gene banks on Earth. A new study into the possibility of creating such a vault on the moon is being led by mechanical engineer Jack Kanthanga of the University of Arizona. According to his initial calculations, transporting some 50 samples for each of the 6.7 million target species would require 250 rocket launches. Scientists have known that the moon has a tail, like a comet, since the late 1990s. But now they know where it comes from, and why it's brighter sometimes than others. The tail is made of millions of sodium atoms. According to research published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets by a team of Boston University physicists, because the moon lacks an atmosphere to protect it, it is constantly bombarded with meteorites, many of them no larger than a speck of dust. When meteorites hit the moon's surface, particles of sodium are blasted into orbit. Photons from the sun collide with these atoms and push them away from the sun. The moon's tail streams away from the sun, not the Earth. This means Earth periodically passes through the tail. When this happens, Earth's gravity focuses the tail into a beam that wraps around the planet and shoots out behind it. The researchers found the moon's tail glows more brightly during sporadic meteor showers, as opposed to annual meteor showers, which can make the tail glow more brightly, but less so than sporadic meteor showers. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.